Today, I'm going to be showing you how to filter CMS items using jQuery, and we're going to be creating a dynamic filtering system where you can filter a list of col uh, several collection items using some, dy some dynamic categories. Okay, let's go. What I've got currently is a list, let's say it's a list of blog posts, for example. Um, it's, a it's set up as a collection list, um, and there's seven of them. They each fall into a different category. And then I've got three buttons here which currently do nothing. Let's go into our CMS item, CMS collection, just to show you what we've got here. So as you say, we just got a really, really simple example kind of blog post item. Now what we're going to, want to do is create a new collection for our categories. Just need to have a name and a slug, really simple, no other fields required. And let's create three categories. Let's go shapes, vehicles, and animals. So we've got three cat three category items. Now we're going to want to go into our blog posts. Go to the settings of this collection and add a multi-reference field. Let's call it categories. And we have to select the categories collection. What this allows us to do is then reference one or several categories from each of our blog post items. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now each of our blog post items has a category item that is linked to it from the category collection. What we're going to do is reference those within the item on our on our page, and that will allow, and that's what we later we're going to be using that to filter. So we're going to be searching for those to filter it. So let's create a new collection list within our within our collection item within our blog post collection item. Let's reference the categories, and let's add some text paragraph, and we're going to get the text of the category name. So what happens? So what, so what we can see now is that each of these items has a reference to the categories collection, and that is based on what I've created here. You could have multiple references for each one. For now, I'm just going to stick to one, but it wouldn't change the code or how this works at all. It would just allow you to filter multiple ones to filter into different categories. Okay, let's create a class for these. Let's call them blog hyphen categories. And let's hide them because we don't want to see them because they are not part of the kind of site that we want our viewers to see. That's just for the for the reference of the code. Okay, now let's create a collection list that contains our buttons. So I'm literally going to create a real simple collection list with three buttons in it. Remember to link this collection list to our categories collection. And let's put some buttons in it. And let's pull the text from the name of our category item and delete those ones. So what we now have is we have a collection list here which contains each of the categories and within each of our blog post items there is a nested collection list and within that there is a there is a bit of there is an element that contains the same name as one of those categories. Now we're going to create combo classes on our blog posts that will allow us to hide them and a combo class on our buttons that will allow them to be set to an active state. So in this case, I'm going to create a combo class called hidden and really simply, it's going to hide the blog posts when that combo class is added. I'll remove it from the remove it from them for now, remove the class, but the class is still going to exist. It's a combo class so we can trigger it using code in a bit. And the same thing here, I've created an active class, just called it active and that makes them appear active color. And that's going to be used for the filter that is currently applied. Now that we've created our combo classes, let's start using them in the jQuery builder created by Timothy Ricks. I will be using this completely because some bits that this some bits of functionality this doesn't offer, but it's going to help us understand what we're creating a bit here for the first half. So first things first, we need to choose a trigger in this case the trigger is clicking on an element with the class category hyphen button. So on click of category button, it's going to, that is the, the trigger that triggers this function that we're creating. Now let's choose what happens when that, when that function is triggered. First of all, we want to remove 
the, we want to make any buttons that are currently active unactive. So we're going to want to get the get the class of our buttons category button, and we're going to want to remove the class active from all of those elements. So make sure that none of the buttons show up as active. Now we're going to want to choose our trigger element. So this is the button that we just clicked, the specific button we've clicked, and we're going to want to give that one the class active. So what we've done so far is, a neat, is make it so that only the button we click is active. Let's go test that out. So we need to go into our Webflow editor, go to the page settings, scroll down to our before body tag, and we're going to want to add a opening and closing script tag. This is where you put JavaScript, of which jQuery is a, a library for. And within that, we're going to want to put our code. Now this is published, you can see that you can select one button at a time to be the active filter, but it's currently not actually filtering them. So let's change that. What we're going to do next is hide all of the blog posts. So we're going to get the class of our blog posts and add the class hidden, the combo class hidden to all of those. And as we already know, that is going to hide all of our blog posts. Next, we need to create a variable. A variable is basically just a store of information. In this case, we want to store some text. We're going to want to get the trigger element, so the button we've clicked. We're going to want to get the text from that button, and we're going to want to save it in a variable. Let's call it text category. We've created the variable text category. Now what we're going to do is do half of the code that we need to, and we'll add the rest of it um, ourselves without using the wizardry editor. So now we're going to want to find the blog categories. This is the one we've hidden. I'll unhide it for now so you can see it. We're going to want to find these. We're going to want to get their parents, so the nearest parent, with the class blog post. And we're going to want to remove the class hidden. So what this would do is remove the class of hidden from the parent of all of the blog of all of the elements of the class blog categories. What we want to do is hide is remove that hidden class just from the ones where blog categories matches the same value as our as our variable that we created text categories. So to do that, we're going to want to add a bit of custom code. Let me show you that now. So we've created this bit more custom code to find within our blog categories, so within these, find just the ones that contain the same text as our variable, and that variable is pulled from the text of the button. So what this means is that when you press on the button, it stores the name shapes, and then it looks for the same, for, it looks for the, for the blog categories that contain the word shapes. Then what it does just here, what we've created just now, is it finds the parents of those and unhides them. So it'll show the ones that have the category that we've selected. Let's save that and give it a go. As you can see, we're now filtering by those categories. So we're almost done, but one thing, what if we wanted to deselect the category? Currently, there's no way to do it. If you click on one that's already selected, it will just keep it selected. So what I'm going to do is create the code for that separately. We're going to restart in the jQuery builder, and then we're going to use an if else statement to trigger that only if you click on a button that's already active. So we don't need to worry about the trigger at the moment. We're just working on the bit between here. So we're going to copy it into our Webflow in a minute. So we want to unhide all blog posts. So that is blog hyphen post and remove the class hidden and we want to find all of our category buttons, which is category hyphen button. And once again, and this time remove the class active. So basically this undoes all of the filtering. So if we go back to Webflow, What we have here is a bit of code that 
undoes all the filtering, and this basically does the filtering. It selects the right active button and it hides the right elements and unhides the other ones. What we want to do is make it so this one triggers if we click on, an, on, an, on a button that's already active, and this one triggers if we click on a button that isn't active. And that's really, really easy to do. We're going to use an if else. So with when a button is clicked, we're going to want to go if this. So this selects the button. So if the button we just clicked has the class active, if it's already active, we're going to want to do these things. We're going to want to unhide all blog posts and unactivate the category button. But if else, so instead, what happens if it isn't an active button, then we're going to want to do this. And we just wrap that in some simple tag, tab, tags like that. So if this happens, do that. If not, do that. Now let's publish that and see what, see how it works. And as you can see, we can filter by animals or vehicles and shapes, but by clicking one that's already active, we can now unfilter them or filter them again by clicking it. Really, really simple to do. We've done this in just a few lines of code that we've written from scratch, and you can really easily customize that for your own projects. Hope that helps.